come out and to listen and so we can listen and you all can share with us. But um, it had been noticed that we needed to have a little meeting to talk about some of the concerns that you all had out here. So before we get started, I'm going to ask Tony Sermons to stand up and give us a um, few words of prayer. Let us pray. Eternal God, our Father, we thank you truly for this opportunity to be able to come together and to come together to discuss the matters and concerns of these, your people. And Lord, how we pray that you will continue to give us guidance and understanding. And Lord, we pray that your will will continue to be done and that we will be the shining examples of the soldiers and the children of God that you are calling for in these days. We give you honor, we give you praise. For it is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. You have an agenda. We're just going to turn it around a little bit. And um, I'm going to introduce the uh, county manager, Mr. Joe Pritchett, and he will introduce the staff to you. Thank you, Commissioner Evans. Um, many of y'all may um, already know some of these people, but it's uh, my pleasure to introduce to you our chairman, Mr. Bill Slaughter, uh, one of your other uh, representatives, Commissioner Demarcus Marshall, Ms. Paige Dukes is the county clerk, Mr. George Page is the director for the Valdosta Lowndes County Parks and Recreation Authority, Mr. Mike Fletcher is the engineer for Lowndes County, and our newest member is Mr. Steve Stalby, who is director of our utilities department. While Steve is new to Lowndes County government, he is not new to Lowndes County. He has lived here all of his life and has worked with uh, Moody Air Force Base in a similar capacity. So we're just very pleased to have him on board with these other members. Mr. Chairman, if you would like to uh, begin to field the questions, we'll take it from there. Good morning, glad to. Um, first off, I want to take the opportunity to thank Ms. Evans uh, for doing this. Uh, Ms. Evans has a real um, heart for service. She comes out here and she tries to work with the folks that's inside her district as much as she possibly can uh, to make sure that your concerns and all are heard. So. Um, Y'all get an opportunity. Thank Miss Evans for those efforts because she is your voice. She's the one in our meetings, uh, and when she has issues and she comes to the chairman or she comes to the manager and her fellow commissioners, uh, she br she brings with her that breadth of experience that um, that is much needed in in uh, in, the, in, a, in any community and certainly uh, in this area here. So she really does have a passion for this area. Ms. Evans, I thank you for that service, and I thank you for the many years of it, and certainly the professionalism at the level that you uh, you show each and every one of us in the examples that you set, so thank you for that. We're here um, to start out, Ms. Evans wanted to start out with some questions, and then hopefully we'll have the answers. So if uh, anybody has anything that, they're, that they have on their mind initially that they'd like to discuss we'll go ahead and get started with that outside of that then we'll be more than glad to just work on the you know on the agenda items themselves is there any particular questions that anyone came to this meeting concerned about i have several calls from a few of you all that had some concerns and when you bring them with you so now okay. is your time to ask your questions all right yes ma'am okay okay i'm melinda mcmillan i live in bemis but this is my hometown and i attend church at saint mary and we came here about 10 years ago because we wanted our road paid. And we had a petition and everything we thought was going okay, but it's still not done. So that's our main concern is our road. And, you know, what do we do next? Can we answer that? Yes. Okay. I'll, I'll give you the same answer that I give everybody else in Lowndes County. Number one is... Could, could we find it? What, what road is that? It's Savannah uh, North. Thank you. Um, basically, in, in in Lowndes County, the ultimate goal is to pave all the roads. Of course, there again, we've got 400 and something miles of dirt roads, 
Uh, and that goal is a very lofty goal, and I know in my lifetime that goal is probably not going to be met. Uh, there are certain guidelines that we try to look at um, to try to see prioritize roads. Certainly a lot of times those, those that prioritization uh, is done primarily through uh, engineering. Uh, they, they keep, uh, and public works, they keep a detailed log of the maintenance and all the different things, the expenses and all the things that goes into a dirt road. And then with the limited resources of fund that the county has, we have to look at, you might say, the trouble spots. We look at those. We also look at roads or you know what the usage is to traveling whether they're thorough thoroughfare roads through roads as you might want to call them that to begin to kind of prioritize which roads with the limited resources that we have that we do pay but as you know we're paving roads each and every year we just finished up boring pond road which uh that road had to be done in three different phases again working with the revenue that we've got uh coppage road uh, up in North Lowndes County, that road is near completion right now. Zipper Road um, is in the process of being completed. So we're constantly very, very aware of all of the dirt roads in Lowndes County to try to get those roads paid. But to tell you that that they're going to get paid and get paid quickly, I, no one can tell you that because it's just way too much money and two, uh, two little resources to try to get it all done at one time. Yeah, well, no, actually something else. Um, we lived on a dirt road. Yes, ma'am. But then they wanted to put a, a community, you know, over in there. So they paved it right away. So it's, do they help pay for that or does the county pay for that? Contractor. When a subdivision is going in. Yes, ma'am. The contract, from a standpoint of a contractor, mm -hmm. if they're putting in a subdivision, then of course, to put to put a subdivision in today the roads have to be done according to county standards and today the county standards requires to, for it to be a paved road and so that is an expense that the developer themselves has to pick up. I just want to know because yes, you know that was after you wanted ours paid but anyway it's two churches on our road now and I want to know if we're uh, doing priority what number are we according to that? Yes, yeah, yeah. Your uh, one of your biggest issues is that is uh, part of that road is inside the railroad right away, and uh, so um, road is going to have to be shifted to the south, uh, or we're going to have to get permission from the railroad to pave that road in, uh, inside of their right away. Well, you know what? I attended another church that had the same problem. But then Langdale wanted to close the road off, so they said, okay, you can close that part off, so then that road got paid. So, you know, so I'm just wondering, because, I, I mean, I've been on both sides of it. Yes. Yes. There is a concern because the, the parishioners there are very up in age. So there's a safety issue there coming well, first of all, let me introduce myself. I'm Reverend Tony Sermons. I'm retired military, 21 years, chaplaincy, um, and I just became the new pastor down here. And my first turn was almost in the ditch. So I am concerned about the parishioners who are much older than I am, who make the turn on that road, that they end up in a ditch. At least, I grew up in Lakeland, Georgia, and Davis Avenue was a dirt road, and they put rocks down. They did something, you know, I, I totally understand that, you know, the paving issue, money concerns, and so forth. But this is a safety issue also, and there are residents, as well as a church that is down there, and when it rains, I mean, the water's coming up out of the ditch on the sides. I mean, the whole parking lot is totally being filled with water. I mean, this is a safety issue. And I've just returned back here after 30 years. I remember being a boy coming down there to St. Mary with my grandfather when I was a boy, and the road was dirt. So... I mean, it's been quite some time that we can definitely make some type of progress 
so that it will not become a safety concern or we <coughs> do not end up having a uh, fatality on this dirt road. Okay, we'll, I'll get with the, uh, the railroad and, uh, and see about getting some uh, getting permission from them to uh, what kind of improvements we can make there. Uh, but like I said, the, the railroad is very particular about uh, what you do inside there right away. you got to get permits and everything like that. But I would say first and foremost, safety is an issue uh, for anybody here in Lowndes County. And certainly, we we may not be in a position to where um, we can pave that road, but certainly from a safety standpoint, we can look and see what we can do to address those issues. Um, I live on a dirt road. I mean, I understand what it's like to live on a dirt road. I've got to go a mile down a dirt road either way I go to get my get to my home. So I understand what that process is and how it works, but I also understand because of all the miles of road and the tremendous amount of load that the, the fine folks in public works that what they have as far as trying to maintain these roads. And certainly keep in mind that some of these roads, just as you're talking about with standing water, some of these areas are very low areas to start with. The water just doesn't leave very quick. I mean, this is flat land and that's just exactly what you're going to have. You're going to have at times standing water. Uh, but we can look at it from a safety standpoint, and then we'll address those. That'll be our number one. Yes, Ms. Okay. 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 Uh, let me ask you something. You say you can't pave that road because of the railroad. Up here at Delmer, mm -hmm. you pave that road there. It's right beside the railroad track, going to the really church good. there. Mm -hmm. That's no. But is that because Sheldon's... Counts back there and it's paid. You pay that. Don't shake your head. <laughs> but anyway, that's my thing. If you can pay one road that's part of the railroad, why can't you pay? I don't want mine paid. You want to move my house. I don't want mine paid. <laughs> All I do want to know is do you ever who's over the road graders, do they ever check behind that road grader? I live on Savannah Road Northeast, right across the railroad track. Our road is just like this. I kid you not. You'd almost fall off the golf cart if you didn't hang on like this going down that road. And I have stopped him and I have asked him, put some dirt back to the end of this highway, down where they come off the highway. It's that deep, you jump off of there. By my yard, if I didn't stay after him, he would cut it down this deep. And I can stop him and I ask him. He said, I know you raked that dirt off. I said, you got that right because you sling them rocks and all that dirt up on my grass. But does anybody ever check behind the road graders? I don't want to see the man lose his job, but I think he's too old to run the road grader to tell you the truth. <laughs> yeah. Answer your question, yes. There is a supervisor that follows uh, the different districts where an operator works. I'd like Mugger. to catch him. Pardon? I'd like to catch him then when he's in our area. <laughs> to answer your question concerning uh, how one road is paved, as Mike indicated, you have to deal with the railroad on their property. Mm -hmm. If you make if you submit it to them, mm -hmm. they will tell you whether they will do it or whether they will not do it. Now the particular road you're talking about, I'm not okay, familiar. It was, it was paid before I got here. Uh, it ain't been that many years ago. No, 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 no. No, no, no. You can ask them over there. No, no. What is it, St. Mark's? I, I'm, I'm, just, to, yeah. Yeah. I'm just saying that <coughs> I can't answer you oh, yeah. why okay. that I one was that. paid. Uh -huh. I can only tell you that when you talk to the railroad, as we have talked to them a week and a half ago, because they have been doing surveys on all the crossings, Mm -hmm. uh, from Waycross to Quitman and looking for which crossings they can close and which have to have improvements due to paving and or cross arms. So we can ask them, we can discuss it with them, but they are the ultimate decision maker on that because it's their property and their right away. Okay. Yes. My name is Rick Gilbride. I live here in uh, Naylor, uh, down at Lake Alive Pond. Since we're talking about roads, the railroads, and, uh, and safety, 
I'd like to readdress the fact that the Lake Lapahal Plantation uh, and now Hidden Cove, um, that there's only one access in and out of that, and that access crosses the railroad track. And um, I can speak personally that there have been times when, when I've waited more than two hours to get, in this case I was trying to get home, um, had discussions by telephone with, with Lowndes County, uh, with CSX Railroad, and uh, basically the answer is we can't do anything about it. CSX has made it very clear, frankly, they could care less whether we can get in and out of our homes or not. Um, in this particular case, the train only would have needed to move two car lengths. It was all it took to open yeah, that crossing. Reminded. Now, I know there's other crossings that, that face the same thing, but we only have one way in and out. Um, now, somebody's going to have to answer when there's an emergency, a fire, a medical emergency, and, and emergency response is unable to get in to our homes. Somebody's going to have to answer the question as to why. Now, there have also been instances, because there's no turn lane to get into our subdivision, cars are stopped in the travel lanes of Highway 84, and there have been, there have been accidents. The DOT has already talked about that. Well, hang on, let me finish. Just let me finish. Let me finish, and then you can talk. There is an a turn lane, and there have been accidents. People have been rear-ended. So, one way or another, um, right now, it's not a large, I think there's maybe actually 85 homes in, in the development, but there is Hidden Cove in the back, and there is certainly room for additional development. So, um, I've sent some letters to, to Ms. Evans trying to get, get some input, so I'd like to see, you know, where we are with that. All right, first thing, your uh, deceleration lane, the turn lane, uh, the DOT has got a quick response project out. Okay. It came out uh, a couple of weeks ago, uh, and do it now. Yes, we came out about three weeks. And uh, they're adding a full 250 foot uh, deceleration lane. Uh, they're going to be moving back the guardrail uh, and uh, closing, closing in in the ditch a little bit. Uh, but you'll have a full 250 foot long, 12 foot wide turn lane that folks can get over in and sit. Uh, another thing, what uh, what Mr. Pritchard just talked about, we met with the railroad uh, uh, a couple weeks ago. Uh, yesterday, uh, I got the uh, I got the construction plans in yesterday where they are putting in uh, crossing arms on Good Hope Road. So uh, Good Hope Road will be paved uh, across the railroad track and just past uh, Irvin's, Irvin's Road. Mm -hmm. Irvin's Road will be paved just past Irvin's Road, and uh, and then uh, so it'll be paved just past Irvin's Road, and uh, they're they're putting up uh, railroad crossing arms uh, at this location. Yes, sir. Uh, why are you on that mic if you don't mind? Uh, because I met with Miss Evans and, and Chairman Slaughter. Uh, several months ago about our second means of egress in Lake Alapahal. And I went around the neighborhood, um, me and about one other, and took a petition around to the neighbors about, because we got wind that um, the county was wanting to bring Wiggins Road in, and we didn't feel like Wiggins Road was the best interest of the neighborhood. We got with the full property owners on Urban's Road that has the front of the road, and they, were, they graciously gave their okay to come across and take Urban's Road straight across by the railroad track. I understand you got to talk with the railroad because you're dealing with that. No, you, uh, there's, Urban's Road used to come, if you go to the end of Urban's Road, there is a, there's an old two-path road that goes right down to Lake Alapaha that is not on the, uh, that is not on the, uh, the CSX right-of-way. Okay. I mean, to get so, off on the CSX right-of-way is not an option. The guy there right, said right. that's not an option. I, I understand that. But if you're saying there's a two-lane road there, not just a two-path road, we don't need much. Well, you've got two options. Yes. Sir. One is mm -hmm. at the end of Irvin's Road, and the other is at Wiggins. Right. The question is, what do you want? This can be accessed today. I'm not saying that's what you want, but that's accessible we today. Can, we can have that open in two hours. This one is going to take a little work, and we still have to get some. You have to get easement signed mm -hmm. uh, and things like that. All four uh, people, Mr. Dinkins is here. All four people that are on the property that said they would give them 
I'm not going to argue and, 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 and my, my thing is, because I've had neighbors ask me, where are we at, where are we at, where are we at? And I haven't given a phone call back to tell me where we're at on it. So I can't tell everybody in the neighborhood, and, and just like y'all are up here, I mean, and you know when you get politics, you take a beat sometimes. I'm on the board out here, so I'm taking the beating there. So I'm not trying to beat on you. I'm just wanting answers where I can go back to them and tell them answers. Well, you know I, think, I, Dick, I think the issue is here is that, uh, and I'm not sure if you've got a homeowners associate, association or whatever you've got, someone needs to be the responsible party that can come to the county and say, this is the one we want to do. Let me, now, let that me needs to be please. done because... We're not going to go in there and spend funding and then everybody, you know, 50% of the people are standing there saying, that's not what we should have done. We should have done Wiggins or we should have done vice versa. Well, the thing is, with, the thing is with Wiggins, uh, if we if we go across Wiggins and, I mean, we're talking uh, one or two loads of gravel, uh, a culvert pipe, and, and we're in. Uh, this is going to take, uh, you know, like I said, two, you know, two hours. Uh, you know, this Wiggins Road is open. Uh, uh, this here is going to take several weeks to do. Uh, we're going to have to be bringing in base. You're going to have to bring in rock and uh, uh, and things like that. So this is to the taxpayers. This is substantially more expensive to do with, with manpower, labor, and uh, materials. And so some of the the, the response that I've got in the neighborhood is the reason why they don't want Wiggins Road in is because and nothing against people on Wiggins Road. But we already have enough traffic on that road coming in and out, and that's just going to bring more and more traffic to the neighborhood. Uh, let me bring you up to date. I'm on the homeowners associate. I'm on the lake management board. The lake management board is the one who owns the land at Lake Lavajo. Uh, we are in conversation and negotiation with Justin Roberts to get a access in that area. Uh, he owns that hundred acres that. Just being cleaned up for people. Yeah. You're talking about Wiggins Road? Yes. You, you at, at his yeah. property. We we don't need anything from him. The his the right of way of Wiggins yeah, Road Wiggins. dead ends into your right into the right of way of I, Lake Lavajo. I understand Lavajo. that. I understand that. But we want to control it. We we want to have a gate there and have the homeowners have their their key that gets them into the lake. So that would be, be able used to for the emergency. Yeah, what's going to happen when there's an emergency? Who's going to have well, a key? Well, you have a key. Everybody no, will no, have a key. No, no, what if an EMT, something like that? These are public roads. I don't yeah. understand what, what the big... People drive in and out of there. Anybody that wants to can drive in and out of there. What I'm concerned with is just the safety of the residents. We need another way in. Yeah. Whether it be along the railroad track, frankly, nobody, you know, nobody asked me. You're never but, home. <laughs> Okay. And you didn't respond to my phone call either when I called you. Um, whether it be along the railroad track, whether it be Irving's Road, there are there are pros and cons each way. But there needs to be open access. People need to be able to get in and out. Um, like I said, it's they're all public roads. Yes, yeah, I understand. I understand the conversation back and forth. But why not have both accesses? I mean, go ahead and open Wiggins up for a security or for. That capability, then go ahead and build onto. You're not you're not talking about a lot of money for Wiggins, the end of Wiggins Road, correct? Get that open so that people can come in and out. And then if they want to regulate it, that's fine. But go ahead and then do the other part. Well, but correct me if I'm wrong now. But once once that road is extended, if it's a county road, it becomes a public road, and you can't close that road off. Correct? So whatever that whatever you do there, it will be open. For anybody well, to come to go. From what I can hear, it sounds like it needs to be open. My, my, my suggestion is this because you'll have a homeowners association, why not you all take that back and contact us so we can know that's, that's what directions we need to go? That's what we need. We, we, need, we, need, we need a decision, and, and I, I hear what you're saying. We'll just do both of them. Well, we can't just do both of them. You know, we, we would like to do Wiggins Road because at this point in time, that's the quickest and the least expensive to do, mm -hmm. but certainly we'll consider the other and look at it and then move forward with that as soon as we possibly could. Uh, but we need to know and need some directions from, from you folks out there that live there how you want to do it. Two years ago, we, there, or maybe it was two years, we had the meeting of the Homeowners Association and everyone who was the consensus at that meeting was to not open up Wiggins Road. Now, you know, some people want to and some people don't, but we put it before the 
the homeowners and they did not want to open up Wiggins Road. So we have tried to do something on alternative that would give emergency access. So that, that's where the homeowners and the lake. We want to try to help any way we can, but we're not going to get in the middle of a dispute about which and what and where now. Oh, we'll, why we'll, is we'll it safety back. just the concern? I'm sorry, ma'am. Why is it safety just the concern? If subdivisions now, under the rules, have to have uh, two ways in and out, that's the reason when they built Hidden Cove, they were required to have in two different right. entrances and exits. So that is now the standard. So why is it, if that's right now, why is it the wrong that was done when only one entrance and one exit was made for Lake of Hall, why isn't that corrected? I mean, to me, it should just be a safety concern. Well, you call it a wrong, but actually at that time it was right. It was not as wrong at that time. And correct. Because that was the standards at that time. Correct, at that time. But right. now everyone knows that it's better to do it. The better, yes, ma'am. Yes. Why? So to me, it's just correcting something that was done. You know, improperly. You know, just because no, that was it at that time right. doesn't mean that it was that it's right. Yes, ma'am. And I and I don't know that it should just be the homeowners. I mean, emergency response. I think what's what's well, that's what's always, their best way. That's in always a concern that that we have is you know what are we what's doing the in a situation like that. And that's the reason why we're we're willing to address the issue. Yeah. Um, but again, we need some direction. Which road do you want to use? You know. That's really what we're looking for. Oh, anyway, when it comes up to the emergency response, if the railroad is across the track at the time, all they got to do is radio 911, their dispatcher, they dispatch CSX and give them to move it. You got to be kidding. Yeah. No. 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 We've tried that. That's scary. Uh, okay. Can I ask a question? Can I ask a question? On that, uh, I'm asking the deal. 